everyone, just going to run you through today's workout. Today's day nine of squatting every day, weighing 172 pounds today. And like I had started with the previous eight days, I started with the high bar squat. So feeling a little sore from yesterday's five rep max that I did with the high bar squat and then the new three rep max on the deadlifts. So I wasn't moving as well or as quickly as I had wanted to with this high bar squat. And like many of you know, I've switched to the high bar squat on maybe a semi-permanent basis to uh, help alleviate some of this elbow pain that I was getting from the low bar squat, which was really interfering with my ability to bench. And I'm not about to lose all the gains that I've made on the bench just because the low bar squat was jacking up my elbows. So I've switched over to the high bar squat. This 410 for two is a new two rep max by five pounds and felt all right considering the the nature of yesterday's workout, which was pretty serious pulling for me. Now, the high bar squat, I see it as having a, a pretty good carry over to my low bar squat. There are many power lifters who train high bar in the off season and then just go to low bar when they approach competition and just increase that sports, sports specificity. So I, I see myself probably training in the same fashion. Now I switch to the standing military press. You'll notice that I've got my feet together and take a look at where I put my hands. This is 205, it ties my old max which was 205 for two. My hands, I'm using a thumbless grip. You don't have to go thumbless, but for me, I noticed that it definitely improves my ability to press. But they're also stacked right on top of my delts, so I could touch my thumbs to the outsides of my delts. And it's important to notice the grip width on the bar, because if it's too wide, then you're not going to be able to get some, the proper leverage in order to complete the lift. And that's something that I see a lot of lifters who are just starting to take the overhead press more seriously, that's the error that they make. So I tried 225 right there, it was a lifetime goal of mine. It got about halfway up. This is another shot at 225, and I hit that same sticking point. Now, the next thing I want you to notice is when I get in my setup, I'm pulling myself into the bar, like it's a, like I'm gonna row my body into the bar, and I get my lats really, really tight. And I make sure everything from my clavicles down is just as tight as I could possibly get it on the verge of cramping tight. So I dropped it to two, 220 and I didn't get that, but I feel pretty good with the overhead press, the military press. And if you can just take those three things away, just whole body tightness, your grip width, and possibly thumbless grip for you, those might help your military press or your overhead press, however you place your feet. I prefer military press just because it's my thing. So after that I went over to the snatch grip behind the neck press. I've got my index fingers about an inch or so outside of the rings. This is my regular snatch grip here. This is 175, so a few pounds over my body weight. This is a 20 pound PR right here. And it went up pretty smooth considering that I had just done all the pressing prior. So I was very happy with this PR. It's not a lift that I train very often, but it's definitely a good lift to maintain and build that shoulder health. And so I'm excited that I still have that kind of shoulder mobility, or at least I'm regaining it to where I can perform that movement heavy without injuring myself. So the squats were so-so today, but the pressing overhead was awesome. Thanks for watching.